Assistance Patrol for 34 years of service. Well, fire officials in Oakland, California are releasing new information about a deadly warehouse fire. The fire broke out during a music event that was being held at the warehouse, killing at least nine people. Officials say the number of deaths could rise after firefighters searched the whole building. And authorities say that about 50 people were inside the warehouse, which houses a group of artists and their studios. No word yet on the cause of the fire. 32 miners are confirmed dead this morning in the second coal mine explosion in a week in China. Officials say out of 181 miners working underground, 149 managed to get out safely. That gas explosion hit the mine in the Inner Mongolian region on midday Saturday. The news comes just hours after 21 miners were confirmed dead following another blast at an unlicensed coal mine in northeast China. In Brazil, thousands of people filled a small, rainy stadium to say goodbye to members of the Brazilian soccer club who died in a plane crash. Grieving family members gathered around their loved ones' coffins yesterday. The crash on Monday in the Colombian Andes claimed the lives of most of the team's players and staff. The tent covering the coffin stretched across the entire soccer field. Well, Cuba is nearing the end of its nine-day public mourning for Fidel Castro. His ashes will be buried today. Castro died November 25th at the age of 90. NBC's David Culver reports from the city in eastern Cuba where crowds gathered for a public memorial. Waving flags from the ground to the rooftops, the people of Santiago de Cuba, Santiagueros, consider Fidel Castro to be one of their own. The man whose presence overwhelmed even in death, attracts an audience. His name alone invokes a range of emotions, depending who you ask, from fear and hatred to love and admiration. The young parading through city streets, seemingly praising the man who ruled for nearly five decades. This country's pride inked on the arms of their young, La Bandera Cubana, the Cuban flag. After a three-day cross-country journey, this is the moment the folks here in Santiago de Cuba have been waiting for. The arrival of Fidel Castro's remains, you can see thousands lining the streets, a little bit of rain coming down, but that's not stopping them. Photographers climb high to get the shot, the young on their parents' shoulders. Even if they're not Castro supporters, pure curiosity brings some here. In seconds, it all passes. Smiling, this woman asks where we're from and says, Los amigos americanos. the Americans are friends and also our fellow Americans, the friends of Cuba, she says, her emotions quickly shifting, tears begin to pour. I know the American people are with us in our great suffering, she says, because we too feel their pain. You can see just over my shoulder here, the stage is set. Several dignitaries, leaders of other Latin American countries, Raul Castro, the president of Cuba, and the former king of Spain, Juan Carlos, all expected to be here to attend that 7 o'clock public memorial, what will be the final farewell to Fidel Castro from the island nation here in Cuba. Reporting in Santiago de Cuba, I'm David Culver. Now back to you. A multi-million dollar facelift coming up, the high-end upgrades coming to Meriwether Post Pavilion, and why it won't just be a, me a music venue anymore. And an explosion of foam filled the Philadelphia street. Why it left customers without power, that's when 11 News continues. Plus, active weather on the way along with bitter cold, a chance for some winter precipitation. It's all coming up in the WBL TV Love forecast. An electric plant explosion sent foam pouring out onto a street in Philadelphia Center City yesterday. The blast happened at a Petco power substation. The station's first or the station's fire suppression system activated itself and flooded the building with foam. Cell phone video shows the foam pouring from the roof of the substation onto the ground. During the video, the sound of a loud blast is heard and a bright flashing light can be seen at the building indicating an explosion. Well, no one was injured, but over 2,000 customers lost power during the ordeal. Now, your WBAL TV 11 weather forecast with meteorologist Mary Marshall. I had to look twice there. That almost looked like a little snow, all white and fluffy there, pouring out of the ground. Well, for us, we do have a chance to see some winter precipitation moving into the area later on tonight. Uh, for the most part, rain, but we could see some other uh, wintry precipitation mixing in. For now, clouds are out to the west of us. They will build into the area, giving us a partly to mostly cloudy day. Here's a 
a wider look at that particular system. We have a system to our south and one over to our west. This one is moving in, dumping some snow around Minneapolis and some is approaching the Chicago area, but you can see some rain uh, still moving outside of the St. Louis area. So warmer and cooler air there uh, trying to get their acts together and also around Virginia. Uh, we have some snow trying to make its way into that area. This branch of the system will stay just to our south as it makes its way over to the east. So bottom line, a chance for rain will kick in later on this evening. 40 degrees now downtown Baltimore, 38 at BWI, 36 degrees in Conkeysville. Great game day weather with temperatures in the 40s out there. We're up to 48 degrees downtown Baltimore, 47 Bel Air, 46 across Westminster and Parkton, and 47 degrees in Columbia with the cloud cover. We will not warm up very much. Look for winds out of the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So if you are heading down to MT Bank Stadium, Ravens taking on the Dolphins. Expect temperatures around 44 as the game starts and right around 46 as the game begins to wrap up. Here's what tops the weather headlines tonight. A chance for rain kicks in. I think the best time to see most of the rain moving in will be after 11 p.m. And we could see uh, some winter precip, maybe some sleet or even some flurries, depending on where you live, mixing in between maybe 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. And then by 8 o'clock Monday morning, this is all out of here. Heavy rain is possible Tuesday, and we could have an odd weather phenomenon working where we could see some ice mixing in with that. So we'll talk about that in a bit. And a very cold Friday uh, with a chance for some flurries early Friday morning. The big story, though, is the big cold heading our way Friday. So we have high pressure in place right now, but this high is going to move over to the east. And as it does, it's going to allow this first wave of low pressure to move its way over. Uh, and that's going to give us a chance for rain and maybe that winter precip kicking in tonight. Also, we have a little bit of moisture and energy from this system from the south sort of coming together with that. Uh, both of them working against us in terms of rainfall. And here's how it pans out over the next few hours. This is game time, 1 p.m. We can see a good deal of cloud cover here. So again, we're not going to warm up very much today with that cloud cover in place. And later on tonight, uh, you can see by 1130, most of the area is starting to get its first round of rain pushing into the area. Look closely here at the top of the screen. You see that pinkish color indicating some winter precipitation mixing in over Pennsylvania. Again, we could possibly see that here, although the models don't necessarily uh, reflect that here. And all through the night, we'll continue to get those waves of rain until about 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, and this begins to wrap up. Here's your seven day forecast. We'll see high temperature uh, right at 47 today, 50 tomorrow, upper 40s Tuesday with rain, 51 Wednesday, a chance for showers in the morning by Thursday, upper 40s, a 40% chance for showers. And Friday, the cold air is here, 35 the high, a 20% chance for flurries. Well, Meriwether Post Pavilion is a staple for the Central Maryland concert scene, and recently many have been left wondering what its future could be. Yeah, but as 11 News reporter Lowell Melzer found out, things are going to improve greatly, and it won't be an ordinary concert venue. Well, it's been a long time coming, but there are finally some major changes coming to Meriwether Post Pavilion. You can see a lot of the stuff has already started behind me here backstage. Not only does this place have a new owner, but once this thing is all said and done, not only will we be able to play here, but work and live as well. For many people in Maryland, Meriwether Post Pavilion is where they saw their first concert and then went back again and again. Recently, with the concert venue in desperate need of a facelift, the owners and Howard County government faced the question of what exactly to do with it. Today is the day that opens the door to imagination. Each and every one of us has an opportunity to imagine, to share, and to get involved. Wednesday, we finally got that answer as ownership is transferred to the Downtown Columbia Arts and Culture Commission. But at Columbia, we know, and we've always known, that it's not just the spaces you build, but how you fill them. And that's the task before us. The revitalization will include permanent parking for Meriwether, commercial office space, 750 residential apartment units and street retail, as well as a mixed-use development and a center for culture and commerce. We're going to have 13 million square feet of commercial retail and residential space, and then we're going to have a Meriwether Post Pavilion that's going to be vibrant and stronger than ever before. And so I think all that together makes downtown Columbia going to be a place that everybody's going to want to visit or live throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Getting to this point was not easy. It turned into a constant back and forth, figuring out who should take over and just how the county should invest. I've been working on this process with three different county executives, three different county councils. So many people came together, 
and it was a team effort because we knew that this could happen. As far as the facilities here at Merriweather, those are expected to be completed sometime around 2019. As far as the rest of the facilities are concerned, we provided some renderings on our website. If you'd like to take a closer look, WBALTV.com and our mobile app. At Merriweather Post Pavilion in Columbia, I'm Lowell Melser, WBAL TV 11 News. A common motive for murder has police looking for ways to stop the violence. Yeah, and it's the reason behind at least 95 homicides here in Baltimore and what police say it's going to take to get that number under control next. But first, here's a look at last night's winning lottery numbers. Brazen murders in Baltimore. This morning, the 11 News I team focuses on police investigations of retaliatory killings. And we want to warn you, some of what you see is graphic. Reporter Barry Sims has the video obtained from police showing the ruthlessness of these crimes and the frustrations that detectives face in solving them. It is devastating and tragic. This glimpse of crime in Baltimore captured by a City Watch camera. A police car moving through the area just minutes before a man runs into the 2200 block of Ashton Street, chased by a gunman. Seconds later, 28-year-old Angelo Yancey murdered right in front of the camera, shot in the head. And that's something that's, that's really up close and personal. And the, the intent of a, of a headshot is to, is to make sure that you finish what you intended to do. Police gathered evidence, including this palm print found on a vehicle. The individual that killed him, we actually had information that night of who that individual was by a nickname. Uh, we had some good video of that case. Uh, and in the video, we could see that the suspect actually put their hand up against the back of an SUV uh, that happened to be parked in the block at the time. Detectives grew confident they would solve the case quickly. But less than 24 hours later, more violence. In the 500 block of South Catherine Street, the victim this time, Yancey's suspected killer, 28-year-old Thelonious Monk. We believe that Monk was killed in retaliation for killing Yancey. If we would have had maybe an additional 12 hours, we would have had an arrest warrant for Monk. And maybe our warrant apprehension task force members would have been able to take him off the street before uh, somebody had a chance to kill him. How quickly can you determine that it's a crime of retaliation? Uh, you can you can almost determine it on the scene. Both men murdered in August 2015, a year when the city's homicide rate reached 344. So far this year, police are investigating more than 270 homicides that say at least 95 are retaliation killings. For the retaliatory nature of this, is it an act of emotion or is it something else? I, I, I think it's it's there's always emotion, but I think it's it's cold and calculated and, and premeditated. And police say usually involve illegal drugs, robberies of drug dealers, and or gang battles over territory. A vicious cycle with police looking to protect the next potential victim. We send all the information we get about our shooting uh, victims and any witnesses or, or people who are nearby shooting scenes immediately to our war room when we're on the scene of a shooting because the first thing we need to do um, is find out who may be next, uh, primarily to stop or identify any possible acts of retaliation. But when they can't, police say they second guess themselves, wondering what they missed and what else they could have done to save a life. If we, if we can move faster, what can we do faster? What can we do better? Um, how can we build that trust a little bit more? The Angelo Yancey murder investigation, police say, is closed by exception with evidence identifying the shooter. The killing of Thelonious Monk. We have not uh, made an arrest in that case. However, we do have a person of interest and we have some active leads in that case that we're currently working on. At this point, police say they just don't have enough to file charges and make an arrest. For the 11 News I team, I'm Barry Sims. And police tell the I-team even after investigating and determining that a crime is retaliation, they still have problems getting witnesses and family members to identify a suspect or testify in court. And don't go away, we'll be back with more news coming up next. Hi, I'm Pete Gilbert. Coming up in sports, Joe Flacco on what maybe would help the offense get going a little bit for the Ravens, plus a look at the American Conference Championship game. Kenny Amatololo lays out what went wrong for Navy.
Now, 11 Sports with Pete Gilbert. Happy game day to you. Big one for the Ravens as they play host to the Miami Dolphins. Miami comes to town with a six game win streak as they try and get ready for them. You figure the Ravens are going to have to score some points. Now, as you go back and look throughout the season, when the Ravens have struggled offensively, rarely has it been that the opposing defense has been the real cause. Generally, they've shot themselves in the foot, either through penalty or simply a lack of execution. But when they go no huddle, they seem to get in a better groove, and that may be the key later today against the Dolphins. I think it lends it just plays well to what we do. We have a lot of speed, uh, get guys in little cracks um, with simple things. You know, don't overcomplicate it for, for everybody. Um, just let, let kind of the speed of it take over. And I think getting up to the ball just plays into that. Indeed it does, Joe. All right, how about on Saturday, the American Conference Championship game. Navy playing host to Temple. The mids with a win. Stay on track for a Cotton Bowl berth, but Temple ruined that party. Philip Walker to Ventel Bryant there, 14-0. Owl, second quarter, same score. Walker, lots of time, lets it fly for Keith Kirkwood. That's spectacular. 56-yard touchdown, 21-0 Temple. That was bad, and then it grew worse. Will Worth, a, such a spectacular season. Coming off the bench for the injured Tago Smith back in week one. Goes down there, ankle rolled up. His day is done. Maybe a season. He had 33 total touchdowns this year for Navy, but none on Saturday. And his backup, Zach Aby, came in, did the best he could. Ultimately, though, that was a third stringer. Big, nice connection there with Calvin Cass. Set up a field goal, but Temple's defense. You knew coming in it was good. It certainly was spectacular. On Saturday, A.B. benched, barreled there, 34 to 10. Tempo wins it. Kenny and Matololo afterwards with a rather blunt assessment. They just played better than we did. You know, it wasn't a schematic though. They just beat the crap out of us. You know, there wasn't you know a magic wand that they um, they just hit us in the mouth. Uh, very, I think, accurately said there from Coach Kent. From all credit to Temple, the Owls were great. Next up, though, six days, you get Army coming to town right here in Baltimore. Mitch Shipman, of course, probably care about that one more than maybe even a Cotton Bowl. All right, that's a good sports. I'm Pete Gilbert. Have a great day. And one more sports score to throw out there for you. Maryland Terps beat Oklahoma State 71-70 to last night. Close game. All right. <laughs> the time now is 5.57. Here's a look ahead to our next hour of 11 News Sunday morning. The latest in the search for a suspect in the deadly stabbing of a 73-year-old man in broad daylight. Plus, we're looking at the chance to get some rain and winter precipitation mixing in. We'll talk about that in the WBL TV Live forecast. And President-elect Donald Trump oversteps boundaries, leading to questions of a policy shift, according to some. That's when 11 News Sunday Morning continues. Stay with us. This is a WBAL-TV 11 editorial with President and General Manager Dan Jarris. Holiday lights, decorated trees, and festive ornaments are all signs that the holidays are here. But for thousands of families across the state struggling to pay bills and put food on the table, buying Christmas gifts is not an option. Since 1979, the Salvation Army's Angel Tree Program has helped to bring holiday cheer and assistance to thousands of children and families throughout the greater Baltimore area. You can bring a little joy and brighten a family spirit by visiting a participating mall, select an angel, grant a few Christmas wishes, and return the unwrapped gifts back to the angel tree. Each angel contains child sizes and Christmas wishes that you can make come true. WBAL-TV 11 is proud to partner with the Salvation Army once again this year. Our employees are participating and we invite you to participate as well. To find an angel tree nearest you, go to the WBAL-TV app. Breaking. This is WBAL TV 11 News Sunday morning. Hello and welcome to 11 News Sunday morning. Right now it's six. A deadly stabbing caught on camera this morning. Baltimore City Police are asking for your help to find the suspect. A fire rips through a warehouse in Oakland, California. Nine people are dead and that number continues to rise. And a conversation of inclusion in Howard County after recent racial slurs surfaced from the students in that area. We'll get to all those stories and more in just a moment. But first, we want to take another look outside with Mary Marshall and Mary. It could maybe maybe kind of snow.
<laughs> we've got, listen, Lacey, we've got a mixed bag heading our way. Okay, we've got cold air, the possibility for some winter precipitation to mix in. It's all heading our way. We'll start with clouds today. Still a good game time weather forecast with just some clouds out there. But after the game is when we have the potential to see some rain and perhaps some winter precipitation beginning to mix into the area. Here at the systems heading our way, we get a little bit of energy to the south of us and a low pressure system out to the west, sparking some snow from Minnesota all the way down to Chicago. 35 now in Conkey's it's 38 at BWI. Temperatures today 46 to 49, so we'll stay within the mid to upper 40s. Cloudy and cool with rain kicking in later on tonight. Also the possibility of a little bit of sleep perhaps mixing in with that rain. We'll take a look at the game day forecast coming up. Well, Baltimore City Police this morning are asking for your help to find the suspect who robbed and stabbed a 73 year old man to death in broad daylight. And the deadly attack was caught on video. We want to warn you the video you're about to see is graphic. It happened Friday afternoon around four at Pulaski Highway and Highland Avenue. Police say the video starts just as the suspect threatens to rob the victim. The two speak briefly before the 73 year old man walks away. But then the suspect follows him, throws him to the ground and stabs him repeatedly. Suspect is no stranger to this area, and I'm even going to venture to say he's no stranger to the criminal justice system. We know who he is. We just need to identify him. Um, he struck this time. He struck before, and he will do this again if given the opportunity. Other cameras in the area capture these images of the suspect. Police say he has tattoos or scars on his face. If you have any information about the suspect or the stabbing, Police want to hear from you. Meantime, the search continues for the gunman who shot six people, killing two in northwest Baltimore. This is video of the shooting outside of a convenience store along Garrison Boulevard on Wednesday. The colors in the video are inverted, so while his clothing appears to be light colored, they're actually dark. Baltimore police want people to pay special attention to something that stands out about the shooter's hand. What we do know is that it's, it's something obvious going on with his hand while he's committing this murder. It doesn't appear that he's holding anything in his hand. We know it's rather difficult to see, but we think that's a clue enough. Police believe the shooting was an act of retaliation for another shooting last weekend. The search also continues for one of two teens who police say assaulted and robbed City Councilwoman Ricky Spector. Police say Spector was attacked when she was getting into the car in a parking garage at Harborview in South Baltimore on Friday. According to investigators, the garage security gate prevented the suspects from taking the car. Police say one of the teens managed to get away. Following her attack, you can see Councilwoman Spector looks to be in good spirits. The Baltimore Police Department tweeted out this picture of her last night. It shows Spector attending a ceremony thanking the Northwest Citizens Patrol for 34 years of service. The investigation into a deadly warehouse fire in the San Francisco Bay Area continues this morning. At least nine people are confirmed dead after a fire tore through a building during a late night dance party. And as 11 News reporter Chris Pallone tells us, officials say that death toll could rise. Nearly a full day since fire swept through an Oakland, California warehouse, which was hosting a dance party, investigators still haven't made much progress in finding victims. They say the roof and part of the second floor collapsed in the inferno. This is a uh, very bad wreckage, very twisted uh, debris in there. Um, uh, it's very, very, it's actually very hard to describe. It's like a maze. Uh, there's wires and, and beams and metal and wood. Uh, it's all, it's all fallen on top of each other. Those who escaped the fire say there could have been more than 50 people inside when it broke out. Investigators believe at least two dozen are still missing. Uh, we expect the, the death toll from this event to, to rise. Uh, people like Daniel Vega have had an excruciating wait for information. He fears his brother is among the victims. And I called my uh, mom and she was like, hey, and I said, where's my little brother? I said, mom, where's my little brother? The warehouse is known as the Oakland Ghost Ship, studio space for artists. Fire investigators say it was cluttered with furniture, wood, and artwork. The only way to the second floor was a staircase made from wood pallets. Bob Mule tried to pull another man out as he escaped, but the fire was too intense. And there was a lot of stuff in the way. The, fire, the, the flames were too much, too much smoke, and I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to let him Investigators say the warehouse did not have a sprinkler system and probably didn't have smoke alarms either. Public records show the city opened an investigation last month to determine whether the ghost ship was operating legally. 
But it appears that investigation came too late for possibly dozens of people. Chris Pallone, WBAL TV 11 News. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, it took nearly 150 firefighters to battle a raging fire. That 10 alarm fire broke out just before three yesterday afternoon in a densely populated neighborhood. They say the flames extended to 11 buildings and several cars, destroying eight structures. Officials say one of the buildings collapsed. The others suffered partial collapses. No residents were hurt, but officials say six first responders suffered minor injuries and the cause of that fire remains under investigation. Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman hosted the first One Howard conversation yesterday. Kittleman started the initiative to address concerns about racism, intolerance, and bigotry. And as 11 News reporter Vanessa Herring tells us, Facebook video dominated much of the conversation. In November, this picture of an Appleton High School student went viral. School officials say the student appeared to have a brown cosmetic mask on and the caption included a slur offensive to African Americans. Well, they had to move out of the community because of so many threats they were getting. Dr. David Anderson spoke with the student, posted the video of their conversation on Facebook. There's over 100 and I guess 5,000 people just within four days have already viewed it. And shared it at Saturday's One Howard Community Forum on Diversity. The packed room watched the student explain that she was wearing a chocolate face mask and didn't know what blackface was before the incident. The girl also said she shared the picture with her friends on Snapchat. Someone took a screenshot and posted it out of context. I'm asking that you put the card on the video now, please. Stop the video. Stop the video. Strong emotions surfaced during the girl's explanation. Can I make a comment about the video? No. Anderson's presentation was cut short and residents were given a chance to react to the clip. You came the platform to the perpetrator and None of the victims, the silent victims, our children, had a chance to speak. They never get the platform. They never get to say what they're feeling. Parents also expressed concerns about this image, which contained a racial slur posted to social media by a student at Oakland Mills High School. School officials couldn't speak about specific incidents, but say swift action has been taken in these cases. This has to be a deeper conversation. This has to be more the community gatherings. And Vanessa Herring, WBAL TV 11 News. There will be a new era in Baltimore City as Mayor-elect Catherine Pugh gets ready to take office. This coming Tuesday, Pugh will be sworn in as the city's new mayor, succeeding current mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Governor Larry Hogan is among those scheduled to speak. The inauguration ceremony will be held at City Hall Plaza at 11 a.m. A lunch and several community receptions will follow, and all of those events are free and open to the public. You can also watch the inauguration live here on WBAL-TV. Well, the time now is 6:10. Ahead in your consumer alert, you can now binge watch your favorite shows on Netflix without being connected to Wi-Fi or use data. Good news! With the holiday shipping season in full gear, how to make sure you get your packages that are due to you? I'm Lowell Melser. The story coming up. Plus, a very active weather pattern setting up with a chance for rain and winter precipitation mixing in. That's coming up in the WBL TV Lim forecast. WBAL TV 11 weather forecast with meteorologist Mary Marshall. Good morning, everyone. The clouds are on their way in, and soon behind, we'll get some rain and winter precipitation mixing in. So look forward to a mostly cloudy day. We already have some of those snow showers and rain showers making their way across Virginia and West Virginia. And later on this evening, we'll have a chance for some rain and perhaps some winter precipitation, maybe some sleep beginning to mix in with that later on this evening and tonight. 36, 35 degrees in Conkeysville. Now it's 36 in Randallstown and 38 degrees at BWI. Here's a looking forward to today. At least we have great game time weather and for most of the day we'll just have some clouds out there. So still not a bad forecast today. 46 degrees in Parkton and Westminster. Towson up to 47, 48 downtown Baltimore, 47 Bel Air, 46 degrees in Northeast and 48 degrees in Chestertown. If you're heading out to MIT Bank Stadium to see the Ravens take on the Dolphins, expect temperatures around 44 at kickoff and 46 as the game begins to wrap up under that cloud cover. It will feel a little bit cooler, so a jacket is certainly going to keep you comfortable while you're out and about. 
let's talk about what's happening after the game because that's when the weather gets really active. Tonight we have a chance to see rain and perhaps a winter mix uh, with that rain. Maybe some sleet beginning to mix in. Heavy rain would be possible Tuesday, but because of other weather phenomenon, we could also see some more ice developing Tuesday, especially early Tuesday into early Tuesday afternoon. And then the other big story is we have a really pocket a really strong pocket of cold air moving into the area that's going to drop daytime highs to the 30s by Friday. So a very cold air is on the way. Here's what we have working right now. Still a little bit of high pressure to contend with. This is going to gradually push over to the east and dissipate. Meanwhile, low pressure from the west is going to move in and also some energy from the south are going to come in our direction and really increase those rain chances over the next few hours. Here's how it begins to pan out. This is game time. One o'clock. You see the clouds are out and about along with you all at the game later on this evening evening will continue to see those clouds and then the rain does begin to shift in sometime between 10 and 11 p.m. is when the bulk of it will arrive. You can see a little bit ahead of that, but the bulk of it comes in around that time. Now the models aren't really picking up on anything mixing in, but it's still possible to get some uh, sleep perhaps occasionally mixing in, especially depending on where, the, where you live. The further north along that Maryland and Pennsylvania border, uh, the better the chance you have of some of that beginning to mix in. We can see it evident along Pennsylvania. Now this event will come to an end sometime around 8 or 9 o'clock Monday morning and then another round of the forecast by Tuesday. Here's your seven day forecast. We'll see high temperatures today up to 47, 36 tonight, 50 tomorrow uh, with the chance for the winds of precipitation between tonight and tomorrow morning. 49 degrees Tuesday with rain in the forecast and we could see a little ice there. We'll be on the lookout for that. 51 Wednesday with a 30% chance for showers that morning by Thursday, 49, a 40% chance for showers. 35 Friday could see some flurries early Friday morning and 38 degrees the high Saturday. So really cold air coming through. Thanks, Mary. There were plenty of people wearing their very best ugly sweaters and Christmas costumes out in Ellicott City yesterday, including Lacey, Ava and other WBAL TV folks, and it was all for a good cause. People took part in the annual Jingle Bell Run. It's a 5K race where people wear their best ugly Christmas sweaters or costumes in an effort to raise money and awareness, all to find a cure for arthritis. Uh, just to celebrate the holidays for a good cause, have a good run, beautiful weather out, so why not? Got to wear the onesie too, so yeah. happy about that, yeah. And that event managed to raise more than $88,000 for the Arthritis Foundation. Lacey, what was the craziest thing you saw out there yesterday? I think there was a guy dressed as a Christmas tree with like <laughs> branches and everything. It was pretty cool. No, that's spirit. I couldn't have run in that though, that's for sure. <laughs> well, up next, a gift exchange scam. The post going around Facebook that you should watch out for. I'm Sarah Caldwell in Tawnytown talking with members of the Silver Oak Academy. We'll tell you about their transformation and why it inspired the Ravens coming up. But first, here's a look at some of the events going on around town this weekend. This morning's Consumer Alert, police are once again warning about a gift exchange scam going around on Facebook this holiday season. You may have seen it on your news feed. It's called Secret Sister. The post claims that you can buy a gift for just 10 bucks, add your name to the list, and then receive up to 36 gifts. Sounds good, huh? Well, experts say this is a typical pyramid scheme, which is illegal. Plus, you have to share personal information like your address. Well, package thefts skyrocket this time of year. With the increase in popularity of online shopping, thieves are trying to cash in as well. 11 News reporter Lowell Melzer has some tips to make sure your holiday gifts reach the intended receivers. Well, the holiday shipping season is in full gear, and that's evident here at the Amazon warehouse in Baltimore City. But there's some things you need to know to make sure you actually receive this package. I'm not sure if he just was driving up the street and saw packages and Figured he would jump out and steal mines with a car in the driveway on a Saturday morning. So I was home. You I was home. I was actually home. Sherelle Green knows all too well what it's like to have your packages stolen. Several years ago, she caught someone with her surveillance cameras that led to an arrest. I see the UPS man throw the package on the porch. I see the mailman throw a package on top of the package that UPS left on the porch. And then I see this guy snatch the package and run. And my heart just freezes. I'm like, really, dude? You stealing my package? <laughs>
Now with the holidays here and an increase in online shopping, police want consumers to beware. Be aware of your surroundings. If you see a suspicious person, if you see a suspicious vehicle, something that doesn't belong in your neighborhood or any suspicious activity, we want you to call police. This time of year, police say thieves are just waiting for that split second to steal your packages. So what can you do? Well, if you're allowed to, have your packages delivered to your place of work or have them delivered to a neighbor or an area business. Also, require a delivery signature if you know you're only going to be home at certain hours. You can also have them delivered to a secure location like one of the many Amazon lockers around the area. And speaking of Amazon, like many companies, if your package is stolen, they will, in almost all cases, simply send you another one. If anything were to ever occur, our customer service team is there for customers, and we love delighting our customers, so we will work with a customer if anything were to ever happen. And for more information on how you can keep your packages safe, you can find some information on our website, WBALTV.com, or our mobile app. At the Amazon Warehouse in Baltimore, I'm Lowell Melser, WBAL TV 11 News. You can now download some of your favorite Netflix shows to watch and share them offline. The company says the feature is available for phones and tablets with certain operating systems by updating the Netflix app. Downloading content still uses data and requires an internet connection, but the new feature will allow you to watch Orange is the New Black while on a flight or riding the subway. And the best part is there's no extra cost to Netflix members. I'll stay with us. More news is coming up next. First, here's Jason Newton with a look at what's coming up later this morning on 11 TV Hill. Hi, Jason. Hey, Lacey. Coming up on 11 TV Hill, trailblazer, history maker, and institution in the United States Congress preparing to leave the Capitol after 40 years in office. The exit interview for a legend, Baltimore's Barbara Mikulski. That's this morning at 1130. We'll see you then. Well, there are a lot of firsts with this week's Honor Rose recipients. Many of the students may be uh, the first with their family to attend college, and many are attending their first Ravens game, all thanks to the Ravens organization and M&T Bank. Here's 11 News' Sarah Caldwell with more. Catherine Gamage, principal of Silver Oak Academy, doesn't take it personally when new students aren't exactly thrilled with the idea of attending her school. When they first get there, of course, they are whining and crying about how they don't want to be there. It's a tough sell. Silver Oak students are considered at risk. They come from all over the state, many leaving home for the first time to live and become part of the community in Keymar, Maryland. At Silver Oak, they develop life skills with the expectation of what they call the three E's, employment, enlistment, or enrollment into college. Before Silver Oak, I was just doing anything I just want to do everything by myself, it wasn't listening. The community component at Silver Oak helps students do more than just listen. They get involved. Adrian hopes to play in the NFL or work with kids alongside his fellow football teammates, a future construction worker, a chef, and a future member of the Army. Once a month, a group of the students come here. They meet with members of the community. It's a chance for them to network and to figure out how they can be more plugged in. This is how some of our student athletes or fellow Rams, we got jobs because we got out to the community. Betsy Baker sits on the board of directors at Silver Oak. I feel like probably their grandmother. And that, that gives me the right to say what I need to, to help them understand they need to move out of the issues and move on to the growth, and I love it. They have a big family. The whole town has taken them in, and we're happy. In Tawnytown, Sarah Caldwell, WBAL, TV 11 News. The time now is 627. Coming up, we'll take a look at our top stories. Including how Cuba is honoring their former president, Fidel Castro, as they carry out the final day of mourning. Plus, we're looking at a chance for rain and winter precipitation to mix in. We'll have several chances of that happening in the coming days. We'll talk about that in the WBL TV Lem forecast.
local, late breaking. This is WBAL TV 11 News Sunday morning. Welcome back to 11 News Sunday morning. I'm Jennifer Franciati. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'm Lacey Griffith. We'll get to our top stories in just a moment, but first we're going to take another look outside with Mary and the tailgaters are going to be getting up soon, so we need to let them know what they need to wear. <laughs> I know. They need to put on a jacket and uh -huh. keep it on all day. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of day. Good morning, everyone. Clouds are pushing in and soon something will fall from those clouds and we're tracking that for you. A chance for rain along with some winter precipitation to mix in. Right now it's 38 degrees at BWI. It feels more like 32 degrees when you factor in that west northwest wind at eight miles per hour. Here's what we're anticipating today. High temperatures 46 to 49 degrees, cloudy and cool, and we'll also have rain later tonight along with the potential for a little bit of sleet, maybe some flurries depending on where you live to begin to mix in with that. Now here's what it looks like by the hour 43 by noon, 45 by 2 p.m. and 42 degrees by 6 o'clock this evening. Coming up, a look at the game day forecast and a look at more rain chances moving in. Thanks, Mary. Taking a look now at some of the morning's top stories. The search continues this morning for the suspect who stabbed a 73 year old man to death and it was all caught on camera. We do want to warn you the video you're about to see is graphic. Investigators released the surveillance video of the person that they believe is responsible. Police say it happened Friday at the busy intersection of Pulaski Highway and Highland Avenue. That's where the suspect approaches the victim to rob him before throwing him to the ground and stabbing him. Officials say the attacker has tattoos or scars on his face. Baltimore City Council Councilwoman Ricky Spector is recovering after she was assaulted and robbed in an attempted carjacking Friday. Police say two teens attacked her as she was getting in her car in a parking garage at Harborview in South Baltimore. One of the teens was arrested while the other escaped. And then following her attack, it appears Councilwoman Spector trying to be in good spirits. The Baltimore Police Department tweeted out this picture last night. It shows Spector attending a ceremony thanking the Northwest Citizens Patrol for 34 years of service. Fire officials in Oakland, California are releasing some new information about a deadly warehouse fire. That fire broke out during a music event that was being held at the warehouse, killing at least nine people. Officials say the number of deaths could rise after firefighters searched the entire building. Authorities say about 50 people were inside that warehouse, which houses a group of artists and their studios. There's no word on the cause of the fire. 32 miners are confirmed dead this morning in the second coal mine explosion in a week in China. Officials say out of the 181 miners working underground, 149 managed to get out safely. The gas explosion hit the mine in the Inner Mongolia region midday Saturday. The news comes just hours after 21 miners were confirmed dead following another blast at an unlicensed coal mine in northeast China. In Brazil, thousands of people filled a small rainy stadium to say goodbye to members of the Brazilian soccer club who died in a crash in, from a plane crash. Grieving family members gathered around their loved ones' coffins yesterday. The crash Monday in the Colombian Andes claimed the lives of most of the team's players and staff. The tent covering the coffin stretched across the entire soccer field. Cuba is now nearing the end of its nine day public mourning for Fidel Castro and his ashes will be buried today. Castro died November 25th at 90 years old. NBC's David Culver reports from the city in eastern Cuba where crowds gathered for a public memorial. Waving flags from the ground to the rooftops, the people of Santiago de Cuba, Santiagueros, consider Fidel Castro to be one of their own. The man whose presence overwhelmed even in death, attracts an audience. His name alone invokes a range of emotions, depending who you ask, from fear and hatred to love and admiration. The young parading through city streets, seemingly praising the man who ruled for nearly five decades. This country's pride inked on the arms of their young, La Bandera Cubana, the Cuban flag. After a three-day cross-country journey, this is the moment the folks here in Santiago de Cuba have been waiting for. The arrival of Fidel Castro's remains, you can see thousands lining the streets, a little bit of rain coming down, but that's not stopping them. Photographers climb high to get the shot, the young on their parents' shoulders. Even if they're not Castro supporters, pure curiosity brings some here. In seconds, it all passes. Smiling, this woman asks where we're from and says, Los amigos americanos. the Americans are friends and also our fellow Americans, the friends of Cuba, she says. Her emotions quickly shifting, tears begin to pour. I know the American people are with us in our great suffering, she says, because we too feel their pain. 
You can see just over my shoulder here, the stage is set. Several dignitaries, leaders of other Latin American countries, Raul Castro, the president of Cuba, and the former king of Spain, Juan Carlos, all expected to be here to attend that 7 o'clock public memorial, what will be the final farewell to Fidel Castro from the island nation here in Cuba. Reporting in Santiago de Cuba, I'm David Culver. Now back to you. BG Helm and United Way are teaming up to help families in need this winter. We'll have some details coming up. And we're decorating for the holidays with Home Depot. Plus, we have a chance for rain and winter precipitation mixing in. We'll take a look at that and the game day forecast straight ahead. An electric plant explosion made it look like snow when foam came pouring out onto the street in Philadelphia's center city yesterday. That blast happened at a Pepco power substation. The station's fire suppression system activated itself and it flooded the building with foam. Cell phone video shows that foam pouring from the roof of the substation onto the ground. And during the video, the sound of a loud blast is heard and a bright flash can be seen at the building indicating the explosion. No one was hurt, but over 2,000 customers lost power during that ordeal. Now, your WBAL TV 11 weather forecast with meteorologist Mary Marshall. I have to say, that looks like snow. I kind of want to just dive right into it. But don't worry, uh, we'll have our chance for snow eventually moving into the area. Clouds pushing in now. We have two systems that are moving toward the area that will give us a chance for rain and some winter precipitation mixing in later on this evening. But the game day forecast still looks pretty good. It's not until after the game that we have to worry about the rain and the winter precip coming. 38 degrees now at BWI Marshall Airport. Feels more like 32 with the wind around 8 miles per hour. Around the rest of the region, we've got 35 in Westminster, 42 in Elkton and 38 degrees in Edgewood. We'll see a high temperature today up to 48 degrees downtown Baltimore, 47 across Towson and Bel Air, 46 across Westminster and Parkton, Columbia, 47 and 48 degrees in Chestertown. If you're heading down to MT Bank Stadium to see the Dolphins taking on the Ravens, 44 degrees as the game starts and right around 46 as the game begins to wrap up. Let's talk weather headlines tonight. The rain and the winter mix happens. We'll have a chance to see rain, but we'll also have perhaps some sleep mixing in with that. Heavy rain is possible Tuesday, and we could even get a little bit of ice at times mixing in on Tuesday, and then very cold Friday as a cold front heads our way. So we have a little bit of high pressure in place right now, but then we have this low pressure system dumping some snow from Minneapolis to Chicago heading our way. Lots of rain to the south around Houston, and then we have some showers popping up just around Atlanta and points north, and that is helping to push also in our direction. So we'll get it from almost every angle here when it comes to uh, the rain and the, and the potential for winter precipitation. This is game time. One o'clock looks good in terms of precip, but we do still have uh, some clouds out there. So a jacket is going to keep you very comfortable. Clouds throughout the rest of the evening, and it looks like the rain chance is better later on this evening and tonight, 1130 p.m. or so. We begin to see those showers pushing in. Look to the north of your screen. See that pinkish color right there with Pennsylvania? That represents a little bit of uh, the potential for sleet or rain to mix in uh, with some of the showers. Now, while we don't see that color, popping up here, we do know that there is that possibility that we could still get some mixing in. So between tonight and early tomorrow morning is the best time to see that occur. Now early Monday morning, uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, this rain is going to begin to clear. We'll actually see the temperatures warm up to about 50 degrees, but the clearing is going to be short lived because Tuesday, by Tuesday afternoon and morning, we have another round of showers pushing into the area. And we, again, we could also see a little bit of uh, ice mixing in there as well. So we'll keep a very close eye on this tricky forecast heading our way on Tuesday. Seven day forecast calls for a high of 47 today. 36 degrees tonight. We're up to 50 tomorrow. Slight chance for showers in the morning. 60% chance for showers Tuesday. A high of 49. 51 Wednesday with a slight shower chance in the morning. More rain Thursday. We're up to 49 degrees. And finally, Friday, the cold air is here. 35, the high temperature. Oh, those temperatures are taking a nose dot. 20% chance for flurries in the morning. 23 degrees Friday night. Well, BG Home and Constellation Home are teaming up with the United Way this year to give the gift of warmth to local families. And joining me now to talk a little bit more about it is Tamla Olivier, President and CEO of BGE Home. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for being here, especially so early. This is good. <laughs> so we like this, the gift of warmth. Tell us a little bit about this program. So the gift of warmth program is a program that we have been running every holiday since 2013, and it gives us the opportunity to bring heating repairs and installations to deserving families across Central Maryland. 
We've been doing it since 2013. We've had the opportunity to help 30 families, wow. and we're looking forward to helping more families this year. All right, so this year, is it four local families that will get some help? Explain that. Could be more than four local oh, families wow. this year, so we're pretty excited about that. We have had some great partnership with WBAL. Our suppliers, Carrier and Train, have uh, donated units, which is pretty phenomenal. It can be five, six thousand dollar units. In addition, we've partnered up with United Way, so the nominations actually go through United Way, and they select our winners. Wow. So if I wanted to nominate a family that I thought was deserving, how do I do that? So the good news is you still have time. Oh, good, good. <laughs> you have time. So we would encourage you to go on to bghome.com backslash warmth and nominate a family you might know that's in need. That's easy enough, and a lot of people, I'm sure, in need. So let's switch gears just a little bit. While I have sure. you here, Mary said the word snow, even though it might not be here yet. How do we prepare our homes for this winter weather? Wow, that is a good <laughs> question. So a few tips. Uh, what I would recommend is if you haven't done so already, please check your filters for your cooling and your heating system. The more efficient they are, the less energy you use, I'd rather spend my money shopping. Me too. <laughs> than on energy. Okay. So I would say make sure you're checking those systems. If you haven't had maintenance come in and just check out your systems, I would get on top of that. Maintenance now prevents kind of costly repairs later, so do that. So important. And then for holiday lights, we have them all around. If you do kind of the Chris Griswold version, I love that one. you definitely want to make sure your power strips, you don't have more than three in each power strip. So even if they have six outlets, only use three. So go overboard, but not too overboard. Exactly. <laughs> All right. You got it. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy holidays. Thanks for having me. And uh, holiday decorating is coming up next with Home Depot when we come back. But first, here's a look at last night's winning lottery numbers. Welcome back. Decorating made easy, less stressful, and a whole lot more fun. Tasha Hightower from Home Depot is here with some awesome ideas. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. I'm so excited you're teaching me things even in the commercial break. Yes, it's really awesome because there are so many different things that you can do other than just your regular lights and your regular bulbs. Like this right here is actually a window ornament. So you can take this and hang mm -hmm. it from the window. That's and so cool. the wonderful thing about these things, uh -huh. Jennifer, is they're really 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 easy to make they're so easy to make right. and you're going to show us how you just take yep. any kind of ribbon that you buy yep. and then you just pull it through here mm -hmm. and then you just tie the ends together Look you just that. make it even uh, Whoop! oh it just popped if off I don't break but it. let's say it didn't do that right let's then say it, it would look that. like this it would go all it the way look through like that it would go all the way through mm -hmm. you make it even on both ends yep you just tie that together and then you can take some velcro which you can find in the hardware aisles, oh yeah right here put it on there and then just put it on the look end look at that and it comes right and off and then you have and a window ornament. Right there. that's awesome yes. all right you've also made your own garland yes you know what using the bulbs for the christmas trees you might have a lot of these things left over I have boxes of so unused bulbs what you yeah. can do is just get some sturdy wire mm -hmm. string them on just like this and there you go. Yeah. And, and you can find this wire. Them on. And the nice thing is they kind of fall in line yeah, on their sure own, do. make a nice little decoration. Then you take something simple like washers mm -hmm. and then you put them at the end okay. right here. And then you can just hang them on your mantelpiece. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. You just, that's yeah, awesome. You can yep. tap a few extra nails yeah, in there if you, you need to. Yeah, you just take something like these okay. sturdy hooks, use that for that. All right, and you can find this type of wire in the hardware section. Absolutely. Okay. Everything, the invisible wire. All right, show your chandelier idea. Yes, I was going to say the invisible wire comes in handy when you use this. These are actually something else that you can do with bulbs, and you just string each one through individually. Uh -huh. They're clear, so there doesn't it doesn't uh, look like too much yeah. you know, wire. Then you just hang them from Look at a that. chandelier. That's beautiful. Right. It's any length that you want to do. Any length that you want to do. You can make the bulbs all even. You mm -hmm. can make them different lengths. It's really, really, really neat. All right. Now, I thought my husband was crazy this year. He decided he had enough of the lights outside. He was done with it. So he bought this. And it's something like this. And it's a projector. Yes. And we poo pooed the idea until we saw it in person. And we're like, God, oh, why don't we do that years ago? That's I know. It's pretty amazing. Not to sound cliche, but these are not your grandmother's Christmas no. bulbs. No. See, this is the thing. You can take this and then put it against the house and mm -hmm. it creates all different kinds of 
decorations right. and laser. It's gingerbread men. It's candy canes. It's everything that and you And the would further need. away you pull it, the more, the more coverage gets, area you that you're going to get. don't have to worry about trying to climb on the roof or sending someone yeah. else to climb on the roof Or those to do lights it. that don't work anymore year right. after year. Now, this is what I noticed too. Home Depot, you guys are selling more and more of the items that you might find in another store. Yes. And this is to make it more convenient. Yes. You want to have a teched out holiday mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. you can tech the holes with all of these things that we have from Home Depot iHome control, all of these things that you can control from your mobile phone. If you aren't home and you're running late and you want to show off the decorations that you have to your neighborhood, simply do something on your phone and it'll turn your lights on automatically. It's amazing. You got the Amazon Echo, right, app the lights. Amazon Echo, and then we have app lights, and then there are timers. If you, Those are old fashioned, but they're still very technology um, based. Tasha, thank you so much. Yeah. You've given us some great ideas. Thank We're going to be making this. these this afternoon in the Franciati house. It thank sounds you like so a lot much. of fun. Thank you. All right, got a purple on for the Ravens. Stay with us. There's more news coming up. Hi, I'm Pete Gilbert. Coming up in sports, Joe Flacco on what maybe would help the offense get going a little bit for the Ravens, plus a look at the American Conference Championship game. Kenny Amatololo lays out what went wrong for Navy. Now, 11 Sports with Pete Gilbert. Happy game day to you. Big one for the Ravens as they play host to the Miami Dolphins. Miami comes to town with a six-game win streak as they try and get ready for them. You figure the Ravens are going to have to score some points. Now, as you go back and look throughout the season, when the Ravens have struggled offensively, rarely has it been that the opposing defense has been the real cause. Generally, they've shot themselves in the foot, either through penalty or simply a lack of execution. But when they go no huddle, they seem to get in a better groove, and that may be the key later today against the Dolphins. I think it lends it just plays well to what we do. We have a lot of speed, uh, get guys in little cracks um, with simple things. You know, don't overcomplicate it for, for everybody. Um, just let let kind of the speed of it take over. And I think getting up to the ball just plays into that. Indeed, it does, Joe. All right, how about on Saturday, the American Conference Championship game? Navy playing host to Temple. The mids with a win. Stay on track for a Cotton Bowl berth, but Temple ruined that party. Philip Walker to Ventel Bryant there, 14-0. Owl, second quarter, same score. Walker, lots of time, lets it fly for Keith Kirkwood. That's spectacular. 56-yard touchdown, 21-0. Temple, that was bad, and then it grew worse. Will Worth, a, such a spectacular season. Coming off the bench for the injured Tago Smith back in week one. Goes down there, ankle rolled up. His day is done. Maybe a season. He had 33 total touchdowns this year for Navy, but none on Saturday. And his backup, Zach Aby, came in, did the best he could. Ultimately, though, that was a third stringer. Big, nice connection there with Calvin Cass. Set up a field goal, but Temple's defense. You knew coming in it was good. It certainly was spectacular. On Saturday, Aby benched, barreled there, 34 to 10. Temple wins it. Kenny Amatolo afterwards with a rather blunt assessment. They just played better than we did. You know, it wasn't a schematic though. They just beat the crap out of us. You know, there wasn't you know a magic wand that they um, they just hit us in the mouth. Uh, very, I think, accurately said there from Coach Kent. From all credit to Temple, the Owls were great. Next up, though, six days you get Army coming to town right here in Baltimore. Midshipmen, of course, probably care about that one more than maybe even a Cotton Bowl. All right, that's a look at sports. I'm Pete Gilbert. Have a great day. And one more sports score, Maryland Terps beat Oklahoma State 71-70 to last night. All right, time right now is 6.56, and here's a look ahead to our next hour of 11 News Sunday morning. Follow-up continues over a phone call between President-elect Donald Trump and the President of Taiwan. Plus, rain is in the forecast, and we could see some winter precipitation mixing in. That's coming up. We'll talk about that in the game day forecast. And the latest in Baltimore City Police's search for the suspect involved in a deadly stabbing. That's when 11 News Sunday morning continues, so stay with us. This is a WBAL TV 11 editorial with President and General Manager Dan Jarris. Holiday lights, decorated trees, and festive ornaments are all signs that the holidays are here. But for thousands of families across the state struggling to pay bills and put food on the table, buying Christmas gifts is not an option. Since 1979, the Salvation Army's Angel Tree Program has helped to bring holiday cheer and assistance to thousands of children and families throughout the greater Baltimore area. 
You can bring a little joy and brighten a family's spirit by visiting a participating mall, select an angel, grant a few Christmas wishes, and return the unwrapped gifts back to the angel tree. Each angel contains child sizes and Christmas wishes that you can make come true. WBAL-TV 11 is proud to partner with the Salvation Army once again this year. Our employees are participating, and we invite you to participate as well. To find an angel tree nearest you, go to the WBAL-TV app. Breaking. This is WBAL TV 11 News Sunday morning. Good morning and welcome to 11 News Sunday morning. Right now at 7, Baltimore City Police are searching for the suspect involved in a deadly stabbing and it was all caught on camera. The death toll in Oakland, California is still rising after a fire rips through a warehouse. Emotions flare at a community meeting in Howard County amid concerns of racism and bigotry. We'll get to all those stories and more in just a moment, but first we're going to take another look outside with Mary Marshall and tailgaters need to bundle up. Yep. Yes, definitely. We'll definitely have some more clouds pushing into the area. So by game time, look for partly to mostly cloudy skies. You can see those clouds starting to drift in. We have two disturbances uh, near the area and those will give us rain chances. Here we have one out to our west and one to our south. Both of them with a little rain and snow attached and we have a chance to see some rain with perhaps some sleet mixing in later on tonight. So 36 degrees now at BWI. That temperature continues to drop. 36 in Parkton and 35 in Westminster. We'll top out at 46 across Westminster and Parkton. 48 Baltimore downtown and 48 degrees in Chestertown. Here's how your day breaks down by the hour. 43 by noon. 45 by 2 p.m. and 42 degrees by 6 o'clock this evening. Coming up, a look at future tracks showing the rain moving in. Well, this morning, Baltimore City Police are asking for your help to find the suspect who robbed and stabbed a 73-year-old man to death in broad daylight. And that deadly attack was caught on video. We want to warn you, the video you're about to see is graphic. It happened on Friday afternoon around 4 Pulaski Highway and Highland Avenue. Police say the video starts just as that suspect threatens to rob the victim. The two speak briefly before the 73-year-old man walks away, but then the suspect follows him, throws him to the ground, and stabs him repeatedly. Suspect is no stranger to this area, and I'm even going to venture to say he's no stranger to the criminal justice system. We know who he is. We just need to identify him. Um, he struck this time. He struck before, and he will do this again if given the opportunity. Other cameras in the area captured these images of the suspect. Police say he has tattoos or scars on his face, and if you have any information about the suspect or stabbing, police want to hear from you. Meantime, the search continues for the gunman who shot six people, killing two in northwest Baltimore. This is video of the shooting outside of a convenience store along Garrison Boulevard on Wednesday. The colors in the video are inverted, so while his clothes appear to be light colored, they're actually dark. Baltimore police want people to pay special attention to something that stands out about the shooter's hand. What we do know is that it's, it's something obvious going on with his hand while he's committing this murder. It doesn't appear that he's holding anything in his hand. We know it's rather difficult to see, but we think that's a clue enough. Police believe that the shooting was an act of retaliation for another shooting last weekend. The search also continues for one of two teens who police say assaulted and robbed City Councilwoman Ricky Spector. Police say Spector was attacked when she was getting into her car in a parking garage at Harborview in South Baltimore on Friday. And according to investigators, the garage security gate prevented the suspects from taking her car. Police say one of the teens managed to get away. Following her attack, you can see Councilwoman Spector looking to be in good spirits. The Baltimore Police Department tweeted out this picture of her last night, and it shows Spector attending a ceremony where she's thanking the Northwest Citizens Patrol for 34 years of service. The investigation into a deadly warehouse fire in the San Francisco Bay Area continues this morning. At least nine people are confirmed dead after a fire tore through a building during a late night dance party. And as 11 News reporter Chris Pallone explains, officials say the death toll could rise. Nearly a full day since fire swept through an Oakland, California warehouse, which was hosting a dance party, investigators still haven't made much progress in finding victims. They say the roof and part of the second floor collapsed in the inferno. This is a uh, very bad wreckage, very twisted uh, debris in there. Um, uh, it's very, very, it's actually very hard to describe. It's like a maze. Uh, there's wires and, and beams and metal and wood. Uh, it's all, it's all fallen on top of each other. Those who escaped the fire say there could have been more than 50 people inside when it broke out. Investigators believe at least two dozen are still missing. Uh, we expect the, the 
death toll from this event to, to rise. Uh, People like Daniel Vega have had an excruciating wait for information. He fears his brother is among the victims. And I called my uh, mom and she was like, hey, and I said, where's my little brother? I said, mom, where's my little brother? The warehouse is known as the Oakland Ghost Ship, studio space for artists. Fire investigators say it was cluttered with furniture, wood, and artwork. The only way to the second floor was a staircase made from wood pallets. Bob Muley tried to pull another man out as he escaped, you know? but the fire was too intense. And there was a lot of stuff in the way. The, fire, the, the flames were too much, was too much smoke, and I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to let him. Investigators say the warehouse did not have a sprinkler system and probably didn't have smoke alarms either. Public records show the city opened an investigation last month to determine whether the ghost ship was operating legally. But it appears that investigation came too late for possibly dozens of people. Chris Pallone, WBAL TV 11 News. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, it took nearly 150 firefighters to battle a raging fire. The 10 alarm fire broke out just before three yesterday afternoon in a densely populated neighborhood. They say the flames extended to 11 buildings and several cars, destroying eight structures. Officials say one of the buildings collapsed and others suffered partial collapses. No residents were hurt, but officials say six first responders suffered minor injuries. The cause remains under investigation. Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman hosted the first One Howard conversation yesterday. Kittleman started that initiative to address concerns about racism, intolerance, and bigotry. And as 11 News reporter Vanessa Herring tells us, Facebook video dominated much of the conversation. In November, this picture of an Appleton High School student went viral. School officials say the student appeared to have a brown cosmetic mask on, and the caption included a slur offensive to African Americans. Well, they had to move out of the community because of so many threats they were getting. Dr. David Anderson spoke with the student, posted the video of their conversation on Facebook. There's over 100 and I guess 5,000 people just within four days have already viewed it. And shared it at Saturday's One Howard Community Forum on Diversity. The packed room watched the student explain that she was wearing a chocolate face mask and didn't know what blackface was before the incident. The girl also said she shared the picture with her friends on Snapchat. Someone took a screenshot and posted it out of context. I'm asking that you put pause me, on the video Call now, class. please. Stop the video. Stop the video. Strong emotions surfaced during the girl's explanation. Can I make a comment about the video? No. Anderson's presentation was cut short, and residents were given a chance to react to the clip. You came, you came a platform to the perpetrator, and... None of the victims, the silent victims, our children had a chance to speak. They never get the platform, they never get to say what they're feeling. Parents also expressed concerns about this image, which contained a racial slur posted to social media by a student at Oakland Mills High School. School officials couldn't speak about specific incidents, but say swift action has been taken in these cases. This has to be a deeper conversation. This has to be more the community gatherings. And Vanessa Herring, WBAL TV 11 News. There will be a new era in Baltimore City as Mayor-elect Catherine Pugh gets set to take office. This coming Tuesday, Pugh will be sworn in as the city's new mayor, succeeding current mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Governor Larry Hogan is among those scheduled to speak. The inauguration ceremony will be held at City Hall Plaza at 11 a.m. A lunch and several community receptions will follow. All of those events are free and open to the public, and you can watch the inauguration live here on WBAL-TV. Well, fallout continues over a controversial phone call between President-elect Donald Trump and the President of Taiwan. The U.S. broke formal relations with Taiwan almost four decades ago as part of its recognition of China. And now some are wondering whether that phone call signals a potential policy shift. Here's NBC's Kelly O'Donnell. Today in China, millions watch government-run TV report on Donald Trump's controversial conversation, a 10-minute call that upended decades of careful diplomacy. Taiwan's president seized on the moment by releasing photos of her on the phone with Trump, provoking China to complain to the Obama administration that had no advanced knowledge of the call. But it does suggest that we have a president-elect coming in who is very unfamiliar with some of the diplomatic challenges that the United States faces. 
Since the days when Nixon opened the door to China, no issue has been more sensitive for China than the status of Taiwan, an island territory that governs itself, but the U.S. does not formally recognize. I'm Janice Mackey Freyer in Beijing, where the call was taken as a serious affront. If it was a mistake, then it's likely to blow over. But if it was strategic, there's the risk of a major rift in U.S.-China relations before Trump's presidency even gets started. Candidate Trump lashed out at how China twists the economic knife. We can't continue to allow China to rape our country, and that's what they're doing. The U.S. trades with Taiwan, including sending U.S.-made weapons there. Trump used Twitter to challenge his critics. Interesting how the U.S. sells Taiwan billions of dollars of military equipment, but I should not accept a congratulatory call? Today, the president-elect's allies say Trump may be sending a signal. China is extremely relevant to us, but we can't let China just run all over our intellectual property and uh, do cyber hacking and, and let it go unchecked. That was Kelly O'Donnell reporting. The Green Party is shifting its attention to federal court in the effort to force a recount of Pennsylvania's pres presidential ballots. The announcement that it would seek an emergency federal court order on Monday for a recount came hours after it dropped a case in the state courts. Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein has framed the campaign as an effort to explore whether possible manipulation of results is a possibility. The time right now is 7:10. Still ahead, what's new in men's fashion and some gift ideas for the holidays. And then a year-end financial checklist. Eric Brotman is here with money decisions you need to make before 2016 ends. Plus, we have a chance for rain in the forecast and perhaps some sleep mixing in details on that in the WBL TV Land forecast. WBAL TV 11 weather forecast with meteorologist Mary Marshall. It's a chilly start to what is going to be a cool day. 36 degrees at BWI, 35 and in Westminster, 40 degrees downtown Baltimore. We're up to 37 in Edgewood, but this is what it feels like outside. With winds around six miles per hour, it feels more like 31 degrees at the airport and feeling more like 33 degrees in Parkton. We'll see temperatures up to 47 degrees in, in Towson, 48 downtown Baltimore. We're up to 46 degrees in Westminster and Parkton, 47 Bel Air, 46 Northeast, and along the Eastern Shore, we've got upper 40s. 48 east in 49 Centerville and 48 degrees in Chestertown. Outside, if you are heading to the game today at M&T Bank Stadium, Ravens taking on the Dolphins. 44 as the game starts and right around 46 degrees as the game begins to wrap up. Let's talk weather headlines now. Tonight, we're looking at rain and possibly a winter mix moving into the area. So rain and at times you may get some sleet or some flurries mixing in depending on where you live. Heavy rain is possible Tuesday and we could see another round of some ice mixing in and then very cold Friday as a strong cold front makes its way into the area. So clouds are already starting to push into the area and we already have some snow showers and rain to our south and our west in parts of Virginia and West Virginia and from Minneapolis down to Chicago. There are also uh, some snow showers there uh, as colder air has taken over in that area. We have a little bit of high pressure in place now, but this is going to slide out and allow for these two systems to get closer to our area and impact us by giving us that rain chance late tonight into tomorrow. And here's how it all begins to pan out out. This is one o'clock game time. It's cloudy, but it's cool. You'll be okay if you're out there. Just bring a jacket and that'll make you feel very comfortable. And later on tonight, notice the, how those clouds continue to push in and then the rain showers begin to push into the area. This is at 1130 PM. We can see the showers forming. Look to the north around Pennsylvania. See that pink color that represents perhaps some snow or some sleet mixing in up there. And even though we don't see that here, there is still a possibility that we could in some isolated spots get a little bit of that to uh, pop and you'll hear the sleet. It'll sort of ping off of things. It'll sound like a, like a, a, a pellets uh, hitting whatever surface they're hitting. This is very short lived though. Uh, this possibility for rain and any sleep mixing in by seven o'clock Monday morning. Most of the rain begins to move over to the east and then we'll see the skies begin to uh, become partly cloudy rather than mostly cloudy and temperatures will warm to 50 degrees. But this break is short lived by Tuesday. We're looking at another round of showers pushing into the area and we could even see once again uh, some sleep beginning to mix in at least early to 
Tuesday. My Tuesday afternoon, we're looking at moderate rain and at times heavy rain on Tuesday evening heading into Tuesday night. So very active weather pattern on the way. 47 today, 50 tomorrow. Remember those shower chances. 49 Tuesday with rain, 51 Wednesday with the chance for showers in the morning. Upper 40s Thursday with rain and the cold front makes its way here Friday. Look at those temperatures diving to 35 for the daytime high. On top of that, a 20% chance for flurries early Friday morning. Thank you, Mary. There were plenty of people wearing their best ugly sweaters and Christmas costumes out in Ellicott City yesterday, including Lacey, Ava, and other WBAL TV folks, and it was all for a good cause. People took part in the annual Jingle Bell Run. It is a 5K race where people wear their best ugly Christmas sweaters or costumes, all in an effort to raise money and awareness to find a cure for arthritis. That event managed to raise more than $88,000 for the Arthritis Foundation. And Lacey said it wasn't really too cold to run. I'm surprised. I think when we were just standing around waiting it was but after that we were excited it was for a great cause so everybody was in the, a good mood very festive yeah. and i loved your outfit it was Thank awesome you. i had fun <laughs> well our financial expert says this is the month not only for spending money on holiday gifts but also to make important financial decisions that will affect you next year he'll explain next and then it's time to shop we're going to show you some of the latest in men's fashions and get some gift ideas for the man on your gift list oh but first a look at some of the events going on around town this weekend Welcome back. The time now is 719 and tis the season for spending, but also to prepare for starting off next year on the right financial foot. Eric Brotman joins us with Brotman Financial Group to help us out. Good morning. Good morning. This is something so important. It is. The spending's already starting, but most of us aren't even thinking about next year yet. Well, that's true. So many of, of the holidays are brought to you by Hallmark. This one's brought to you by Visa. <laughs> I know, I right? Yeah, so true. Absolutely. All right, let's so start our checklist off. Um, first thing, take capital losses and avoid capital gains. Yeah, often, often we look to harvest gains or losses based on what we think is going to happen with tax policy. This year, it is, it is very unlikely that we'll see any tax increases in the following year because of the elections and so forth. So I would anticipate that taxes will either be the same or lower next year. Okay. So postpone gains. Don't take any gains right now if you can avoid them. This is a great year to take losses and to reduce your income. Okay, cool. Um, fully fund your health savings account for the year. Health savings account is a gift from the government we should take. Truly, um, it is an opportunity to take, pre to take dollars pre-tax, put them away, and hold them long-term for a future health uh, event, which most of us have in our futures, whether we like to think about it or not. Always good to count ahead of time. Absolutely. Increase your retirement uh, plan contributions for next year. If you're already maxing your retirement contributions, there's been no change to the limits for next year, so you don't have to take any action. If you're not, it's a great time to bump up your contribution by 1% or 2%. Uh, so that you're constantly getting closer and closer to your goal. That money we're looking forward to, but it's a, a road to get to it. Correct. All right, decide about contributions to IRAs and Roth IRAs. Yes, uh, this, is, uh, this is a good year, I think, for most folks for traditional IRAs, but nonetheless, either a traditional Roth IRA contribution, you have till April 15th to make it for 2016, but you need to let your tax preparer or CPA know that you're doing it so that it doesn't get missed when you file. Okay, do that ahead of time. Yep. All right, now, I don't know how many people can do it, but prepay your January mortgage. We're spending so much on gifts, it's hard to think about that. Well, stop doing that. No, <laughs> it, so you don't have to buy me anything. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. If, if you have the ability to pay your January mortgage early, in some cases it can actually create some savings because you can take the deduction a little bit early. This is especially true for, uh, for new homes, where you've bought your new home for the first time and you have that opportunity. Otherwise, if you do it every year, it's sort of a wash anyway. Okay, and last but not least for sure, make charitable gifts, something we'd all like to do. It's a great time to do that. Not only is there a great need for it, but this is a great time to, uh, to not only make uh, financial gifts and, and monetary gifts for tax reasons and also to be charitable, but also it's a great time to go through your home. People talk spring cleaning. This is, this is pre-holiday cleaning. This is a great time to, to, to give away some of the things you no longer use, clothes that don't fit and so forth, especially since in a lot of households you're making room for new stuff. And it really truly helps others. So it does. It's a double, double whammy. Everybody right? wins. All right, Everybody Eric, wins. thank you so much thank as you. always. Thank you. Stay with us. More news is coming up next. First, here's Jason Newton with a look at what's coming up later this morning on 11 TV Hill. Hi, Jason. Hey Lacey, coming up on 11 TV Hill, trailblazer, history maker, an institution in the United States Congress preparing to leave the Capitol after 40 years in office. The exit interview for a legend, Baltimore's Barbara Mikulski. That's this morning at 1130. We'll see you then.
Welcome back. Edward Steinberg from JS Edwards LTD is here to show us what an exciting time it is to showcase new men's fashion for fall and for the holidays. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having JS Edwards here to talk about men's gift ideas and men's fashion for you the holidays. You are so welcome. And there's so much that I didn't even Absolutely. know existed. And we're going to start with what's on the rack right over sure. here. And we have to go right to this amazing right. shirt because this is pretty darn awesome. Describe this shirt. It's real Baltimore. This is uh, from a company called Robert Graham. It's their holiday shirt and it says love you hunt for you so it's definitely a Baltimore shirt we have to have it in the store okay this is awesome what next going to those parties for the holidays you have to have exciting shirts so this is another one Robert Graham tricked up the collar tripped up the cuffs you know just a little fun idea you can put with jeans you can put under a great tuxedo jacket and go to those holiday parties very cool and then if you want to change it up a little bit we've got a yeah another little option here just a, a Blue shirt there we go. from Robert Graham. Look at that, that's awesome. Yeah, okay, and then something fun, because we fun. have to get to this. These are a boxer boxers, right? This is by Robert Graham again, and it's got a little bulldog on it the side. It does, a little bulldog, see. how cute. And All right, you can really so change things really, up in the undergarment area men there. Are getting excited Who knew? Their, their underwear, you know, now. This company called Saks. Not only uh, just fashionable, but also great in comfort. All right, well, from underwear to outerwear. All and right, with this a nice is fleece our, options. Probably our number one uh, zip top. It's fleece, it's kind of warm, it's unisex. Men or women can Look at wear these. it. These, these are and, fantastic. Yeah, they're so soft. They are super duper soft. And then you have some scarves. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a hemp patch scarf from Deanna Canada. Very nice. All, All right, let's done. get to some of these cool great. accessories. You have ties and socks and shoes. Socks are the greatest gift item for men. Men love them. I call them sweater for their feet. <laughs> and they've gotten so exciting with things like the eyeglasses, with music, with locks, with lips. So it's an easy thing. The ultimate gift for any guy, feel this. This is the cashmere sock. Oh, wow. That is super duper soft. So you can really soft. give that a great gift idea That's for nice. the holidays. Nice, cool shoes. Blue sh mm -hmm. suede shoes. You know, Elvis is Literally back in the house. Literally, blue suede shoes. Yeah, yeah. So for your jeans or for your holiday party. You can really about, mix it up, too, when it comes to, you know like, what? purple purple not only mm -hmm. this is great this is the same sweater reverse so oh, no way. you turn it inside oh, yeah. out it's sure two is. for one Look at that. you know you, you're traveling you need mm -hmm. a sweater uh, to go away with and next day you change it when you're uh, out down for breakfast and put on a new sweater cufflinks are not dead cufflinks absolutely are not dead and bracelets are coming on for men really men love bracelets starting to wear them just as a little accent piece yeah. you know uh, guys aren't wearing watches anymore, so they're starting to wear bracelets. That's cool. And aren't these are supposed to be for luck, aren't they? Yeah. I read that one time. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. So and then going course, to the ultimate nice holiday party, mm -hmm. we have this uh, jacquarded jacket from Ross Grayson with uh, a great tie. Uh, we even have some uh, bow ties that have lorex in it can dress up that tuxedo jacket of yours. For and the bow ties party. are back big time. Listen, thank you so much for coming in. Great gift ideas. Stay with us.